Hello students, in this video we'll see how to solve the heat equation with initial conditions which arise from the Black-Scholes equations. So let's consider u tau equals uxx, where x is between negative infinity and infinity, and tau is greater than zero. And I'm going to give this initial conditions that u of x and zero is a special initial condition which arose from our Black-Scholes differential equation. It's e to the negative one-half lambda plus one x minus e to the one-half lambda minus one x and zero. Okay, so this is our one of our components of the Black-Scholes. So these are Black-Scholes initial conditions. And so now I can write down the solution of the heat equation. We know from a previous video what the fundamental solution is. We know now that the solution to this, u of x and tau, is going to be 1 over 2 square root pi tau, the integral over r, and then u of s0, and then the exponential of negative x minus s over 4 tau squared ds. That's the fundamental solution to the heat equation, which we know from a previous video. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to break this. The first thing I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to change the coordinates, put this into a standard Gaussian. So what we're going to do is we're going to let y, we're going to let y be equal to s minus x over root 2 times root tau. Square root tau. Like that. Okay. Then what's the dy going to be? Then dy is going to be equal to ds over just root 2 tau. And then our integral over here, then y squared is going to be s minus x squared, and then a 2, so this is going to be our, our exactly where our Gaussian case is going to be. So now I've changed this problem. So now this root 2 over here is really root 2, and then another root 2. So I'm going to have a root 2 pi, 1 over square root of 2 pi. That's exactly what we see for standard normal. The integral over r, my limits don't change, and this is a linear transformation. Then I'm going to have u of now, what is uh, s going to be? s is going to be x plus square root 2 tau y, comma 0, and then e to the negative y squared over 2 dy. So this is an alternate representation of the solution of the heat equation. I just basically sort of shift things over to put things in terms of a standard Gaussian, which is typically what we like to do when we're thinking about probability theory. And so now, of course, I'm going to fill in the initial conditions. So now we notice that, of course, this looks like e to the lambda x and then there's another e to the lambda x times a half with a one-half factor. Then I have an e to the x over 2 minus e to the negative x over 2. That's a cinch. We know the cinch is greater than or equal to 0 when x is greater than 0. So, in other words, this thing over here, the y variable has to be greater than. So, in order for this initial condition to turn on, y must be greater than negative x over 2 root 2 tau. That's where that initial condition turns on. And I'm going to have two integrals to evaluate. The first integral we're going to have is we're going to have 1 over the square root of 2 pi. The integral from negative x over 2 root tau to infinity, and then this expression e to the 1 half lambda plus 1. Uh, now my x is replaced with this whole expression over here. Then I'm going to have an x plus root 2 root, two root tau y. All right, and then that's going to be hit with this negative exponential Gaussian. And then the same thing. Except what's going to happen over here is now the lambda 1 is going to be replaced with lambda 2, right? So I'm going to have the integral from negative x over the square root of 2 tau, and then up to infinity, and then e to the 1 half lambda minus 1, and then x plus the square root of 2 tau y, and then it gets my Gaussian kernel dy, okay? In other words, so this is the solution of the heat equation with the Black-Scholes initial data. And then further on, what we're going to do is we're going to change all of these things back to the original C and S variables, and we'll see what the formula has to be in terms of the C and S variables. Now, both of these things, both these integrals are exactly analogous to compute, so I'll do is I'm going to compute this first one. Notice the only difference between these integrals over here is that this plus turns into a minus over here. So we're just going to focus on this first integral over here, and then what we'll do is I'm going to call this integral over here just, let's call this over here I for my first integral. And then the second integral over here is going to be the exact same formula, just with lambda replaced with negative lambda. Uh, lambda plus 1 with lambda minus 1. Good, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pull out this 1 half lambda x term over here. So that's going to be a e to the uh, 1 half lambda plus 1 x. That term is just going to come out. And then we're going to have what? Over the square root of 2 pi, the integral from negative x over the square root of 2 tau 
up to infinity. And then we're going to have a factor of what? Now I'm going to write this as e to the negative one half. Then we'll have a lambda squared. And then I have a what? Then we have a one half over here. So I'm going to have a lambda plus one times this thing over here. So I'm going to make that negative though. So negative lambda plus one, lambda plus one, and then square root two tau times y. So that's what that expression is going to look like. And then of course we have minus two over here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to complete the square in, one, in sort of in one step to sort of see what we need, what the factor that we need over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a factor now. So what I need to do to complete the square is inside here, what do we need to do? Inside here, inside that parentheses, I'm going to need to add one half of this expression squared, right, to y. So we're going to add in what are we going to add in? Let's do the calculation over here. We have to add in one half of this. So it's going to be lambda plus one root two tau over two. I have to add that expression into the parentheses. So what's that going to give me inside the parentheses? That's going to be a lambda plus one squared and then a two tau, two tau, all divided by, all divided by four. So of course, that two and that four are gonna cancel and just turn into a two. So that's what I'm gonna add inside over here. So I've really subtracted that off over here. So I've subtracted off a total factor of what? I've subtracted this, um, I've subtracted that off, so I have to add that back in. So I need to get lambda squared times tau, all divided by what? There's a two and a four, so I need a four over here. Good. And then the same, I'm gonna put same for y. So in other words, minus this, y, this um, we're calling this second integral over here, i2, i2. Excellent. Now, of course, what I've just done is this entire expression over here is nothing more than e to the one half lambda plus one x. And then I'm going to have an e to the lambda plus one squared, lambda plus one squared tau over four from that term over there, which I'm going to now pull out. And then this thing over here is now, uh, it's the shifted thing over here. So how much have I shifted by? I've shifted by exactly half of this expression over here. I've shifted by this expression over here. So this is really nothing more than, let's write it out. This is really nothing more than a negative one half and then a y minus lambda plus one root two tau over two quantity squared, right? So that's my quantity squared. And we can easily check that too. If I square this, I'm going to get that. And if I do double of this, I'm going to get back to that. So now what, me, what that means is I've just sort of shifted y over by that much. So I can change this limit. I can shift this x over by this much more. And so what we're going to see is we're going to see this is going to be the integral 1 over square root 2 pi. And I'm going to integrate from negative x over root 2 tau to infinity. And then I have to sub subtract off this expression as well. So minus a lambda plus 1 root two tau over two, okay? And then e to the negative y squared over two. And so we have over here, and then minus the same thing for two, right? And so what we're gonna have over here is we have that our solution has the following form. Our solution is gonna have the form, so let's write this on top, so we have an e to the one half lambda plus one x e to the lambda plus one squared tau over four. And then this is gonna be the standard normal distribution at this value over here. This is gonna be the normal, dis this is the CDF of a normal zero one, CDF of normal zero one. At what value? At the negative of this, but we know that if you, if you integrate from an, the CDF of n of negative x, it's the same thing as the, uh, by symmetry of n of x. So it's gonna be n of what? Of x over square root two tau plus lambda plus one root two tau over two. And then the same thing with a negative for the lambda, with a lambda minus one for the, for the two, plus, or minus rather, minus e to the one half lambda minus one x, e to the lambda minus one squared tau over four, and then n of what? Of x over the square root of two tau, uh, then plus lambda minus one root two tau over two. And that is the solution of the heat equation with the Black-Scholes initial data. Now, we'll just unwrap this and see what happens when we unwrap this in terms of the original, uh, original parameters S, 
K, and T. Since this is our formula for U, we can now recall what U and V, how U and V are related. We know that V of X and tau is E to the negative one half lambda minus one X, and then minus one quarter lambda plus one squared times tau times the function U of X and tau. Now let's see what happens over here. Notice that when we, when we take this first term over here and hit it with the exponential, what we're going to get is we're going to have everything over here is going to cancel out except for the what. So this term over here will cancel with this term, and then the negative lambdas will cancel, and I'll have the what? A one-half x and a one-half x, so that's going to be an e to the plain old e to the x times this thing over here. So the first term over there is just going to be an e to the x times n of this expression, n of, and now we're going to simplify this too. I'm going to write this as x plus, and then I'm going to have a lambda plus 1, lambda plus 1, and then this root 2 over 2 is the same as 1 over root 2. I'll put a root tau on top, so I'll put root tau on top. And then if I put root tau on top, I can put root tau on the bottom. So I have it over root 2 times tau in the denominator. And then let's look what happens in the second term over here. In the second term over here, what will happen? Now, this first exponential term will cancel, and then we'll have the difference of these two squares over here. So we're going to have this expression over here and this expression over here. So then we're going to have e minus e to the one quarter tau, and then it's gonna be the difference of lambda minus one squared and lambda plus one squared, okay? And this will be n of x plus one minus lambda root tau all divided by two tau square rooted. Great. And so now let's simplify this over here. Let's do an algebraic simplification. So what happens over here is this is going to be a total factor of, so we have over here a, I'm gonna, if I expand this, I'm gonna have a lambda squared minus two lambda plus one, and then minus lambda squared, then minus plus two lambda plus one. And so we see that inside the parentheses over here, everything's gonna cancel except for negative four lambda. So this is gonna be just a negative, so all total what we have over here. So all total, we're gonna have a negative four lambda, so that's gonna turn into a negative tau lambda. So this is gonna be an e to the x. Now we know what e to the x is. So e to the x, recall that we had the variable s was k e to the x. So what this guy is over here is this e to the x is really just s over k. So this is gonna be s, the strike price, the stock price over the strike price, and then let's do this, let's fill in a few more things over here. This is going to be n of what? x is going to be, well, remember the x is just the log of s over k. And then lambda, recall, lambda was r over sigma squared over 2. That was our choice for lambda in our transformation. So now this becomes what? This is going to become, then I have a plus, and then I have an r over sigma squared over 2 plus 1. And then what was tau? Well, we know what tau was, so we know that t was t capital minus tau over sigma squared over 2. And so that says that tau was sigma squared over 2, and then t minus little t over here. So I can now fill that in for the square root over here on top. So if I multiply by a tau, I'm a, a plain old tau on, that's going to be a plain old tau on top, actually. So that's going to be, these root taus are actually just plain old taus. So I'm going to turn that into a tau, that into a tau. Those are just taus. So let's fix that. Those are taus because I've rationalized tau and tau. Beautiful. And so now I can fill in tau over here, which is just going to be a sigma squared over 2 and then t minus t. All divided by, all divided by what? all divided by um, square root of two times tau. Well, what will tau times two be? Sigma square root t, so it's gonna be a sigma square root t minus t. And the same thing over here, um, except there's gonna be a minus sign over here. So what will happen is that we'll have this expression, then I'm gonna have minus e, and we saw this was gonna be a minus four, a minus lambda times tau. Lambda tau and then n of this expression over here, and we'll see that this expression is going to be exactly the same form. It's going to be the natural log of s over k, and then, um, except uh, plus one of a minus one over here. So what we'll just simplify to this is going to be plus, if we cancel out that tau squared over two, it's going to be an r minus sigma squared over two, t minus t, 
all divided by sigma square root t minus t. Okay? Now, the next question we have to address is that what is this lambda times tau? Well, let's figure that, that out now. So we know what lambda is, and we know what tau is, right? So lambda times tau is just going to be r. Uh, so if I do lambda times this thing over here, the sigma squares are going to cancel. I'm just giving r and then a t minus t. So now we have what v is, but recall that c was what? c was k times v. So if I multiply v by k, what will we get? So if we multiply v by k, we'll have the call premium if we just gather everything together. So now finally, we can conclude that the call premium, c, is going to be k times this. So it's going to be s times n of natural log of s over k plus r plus sigma squared over 2 t minus t over sigma root t minus t. And then minus k, and this was going to be an e to the negative r, negative r t minus t, and then n of natural log of s over k, and then plus r minus sigma squared over 2 t minus t over sigma square root t minus t. And this is the solution to the Black-Scholes equation with the initial condition that's given by the call um, the call payout. And so by transforming the Black-Scholes equation into the heat equation, solving the heat equation with the Black-Scholes initial data, and then basically re-plugging in all the variables we transformed, we arrive at the Black-Scholes condition, the Black-Scholes formula. Thank you very much.